For 27 years, this is what Kermit the Frog sounded like. It's the Muppet Show with our very special guest star, Mr. Steve Martin. Here's what he sounds like now. I know it seems like we've already given everything we can, but if we don't give a little more, we could lose the whole theater. In 2017, Disney and the Jim Henson Company fired and replaced Steve Whitmire for his role as Kermit the Frog and replaced him with Big Bird's puppeteer and voice actor, Matt Vogel. According to Disney, Steve Whitmire was replaced for unacceptable business conduct. According to Steve Whitmire, he was trying to protect the integrity of the character. The phrase creative differences isn't just a blanket statement companies make to justify a termination. Sometimes people's visions just don't line up. In any creative process, the ability to compromise is an absolutely crucial component. And without it, your project might be up a creek without a banjo. But before we dive in, be sure to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic if you haven't done so already. Kermit the Frog made his first appearance in 1955 on one of Jim Henson's first television shows titled Sam and Friends. What will it be, ma'am? I'd like an omelet, a western omelet. I'm sorry, but we didn't get a delivery of eggs this morning. He was likely more lizard-like in appearance, but eventually it was established that he was in fact a frog. In 1969, Kermit served as one of the main characters on Sesame Street, and in 1974, The Muppet Show was released and Kermit the Frog exploded into the cultural zeitgeist as sort of the everyman character serving as an anchor for some to the Muppets' more insane characters. After Jim Henson passed away, the role was passed on to Muppet puppeteer Steve Whitmire, who at the time was performing in the role of Rizzo the Rat. Wait, wait a second. You're going to ask Cindy Crawford out on a date? <laughs> he would hold on to the role for nearly three decades. If you do anything for 27 years, odds are that you're going to feel a sense of ownership over whatever it is you're doing, especially when you've worked so hard to get to where you are. Puppeteering is much, much different from acting in front of a camera or on a stage in the sense that voices and puppets don't age. You're never too old or too young to voice a character. This allows voice actors and puppeteers to essentially hold on to their roles until one of three things happen. One reason performers leave their roles is that they get fired. This could occur for any number of reasons, performance issues, showing up late, fighting with production staff, being unprofessional, the normal reasons someone would get fired at a job. A less frequent scenario is that the performer gets tired or bored and moves on to another project. This doesn't happen often. These performers work frequently, and only a handful of people at the top of their field get the big roles. If you look at any successful puppeteer's IMDb page, you will likely see hundreds of credits. They can work often and they can work for decades. Their bodies age much faster than their voices, so someone like Steve Whitmire could have likely voiced Kermit the Frog in perpetuity. The final reason these performers leave is that, well, they die. However, death in the world of puppeteering is a strange process. Sometimes the performers themselves, or in the case of Kermit the Frog, the family members of the deceased performer choose the successor to the respective roles. Steve Whitmire was chosen by Jim Henson's family to succeed the man himself, Jim Henson. And those are some pretty big shoes to fill. When you take the fact that Steve Whitmire was chosen by the Hensons and add in with the fact that he'd been working as Kermit the Frog for 27 years, it starts to make sense as to why he may feel a sense of ownership over the character. Puppeteers grow attached to the character they play, and often refer to the characters as if they were family members or best friends. Whether or not this mentality is healthy is up for debate, but if a bunch of people came along and started changing your best friend's personality, you'd probably say something about it. It might even make you angry, and anger can turn into hostility very, very quickly. Of course it's an orange! I oh just told boy. you it was an orange! Me guess right! Me no. get cookie! Give me cookie! No, you don't get a cookie! When Disney acquired the Muppets from Jim Henson Studios in 2004, it was clear that they had big plans for the characters. After all, Kermit the Frog is essentially the Mickey Mouse of puppetry. In 2011, the Muppets starring Jason Segel was released and it gave new life to the iconic characters who younger audiences were losing interest in. They spawned a sequel in 2014, and it seemed like the Muppets were here to stay. In 2015, things really started to change for the Muppets. Their eponymous TV series began airing on ABC Primetime, and it just felt different. It felt more adult and complicated than the Muppets usually felt. Their signature wackiness and silliness was replaced with weird relationship dynamics and interpersonal drama. It didn't feel like fun. It felt like a second-rate version of The Office. How about we film the series in that crazy handheld documentary style and have cutaways to one-on-one -on -one interviews? Oh, no, that's terrific, Floyd. It was particularly strange for Kermit the Frog, who was caught in this weird love triangle between a sort of abusive ex-girlfriend and a new romantic partner. It just didn't feel like Muppets to anyone. 
The new format and new direction did not resonate well with audiences, and the show was canceled after just 17 episodes. Have you seen it? Well, I, I believe you know the answer to that question. You are not taking this seriously oh. enough! This would be the last time that Steve Whitmire provided the voice of Kermit the Frog. During production of the ABC series, Steve Whitmire was apparently a complete nightmare to work with. The two stated reasons for which he was fired were giving unwanted notes during the production process and a union dispute. Whitmire stated that Disney felt he was being disrespectful toward a handful of creatives during the production process. While Whitmire denied that he was coming from a place of disrespect, he did extrapolate. I have been outspoken about what's best for the Muppets since the Muppets came to Disney. But the fact is, I have respect for everyone who was involved in the creation of that series for their own particular contributions. At the same time, I also have insight into the limitations with respect on how well they know the Muppets. It's in the latter half of the statement where Steve Whitmire really shoots himself in the foot. He's basically saying he knows what is better for the Muppets than the owner of the Muppets. While they were trying to take these characters in sort of bold new directions, Whitmire was fighting against them every step of the way. Disney paints a different picture of Whitmire's last days as Kermit. They stated that the actor exhibited unacceptable business conduct and that he was overly hostile and unproductive. And that, after consultation with the Henson family, they determined it would be best to terminate Steve Whitmire's relationship with Kermit the Frog. Whitmire then sort of doubled down on his stance, stating that, We've been doing these characters for a long, long time, and we know them better than anybody. I thought I was aiding to keep it on track, and I think a big reason why the show was cancelled was because that didn't happen. I'm not saying my notes would have saved it, but I think had they listened more to all of the performers, it would have made a really big difference. Steve Whitmire felt entitled, and he likely grew too close to his character over the three decades he spent with Kermit. So it might be true that he took these changes to Kermit as a direct attack on himself. The union dispute was likely the icing on the cake as far as decision to terminate Steve Whitmire goes. There was a dispute in contract classifications between SAG-AFTRA and Disney's Department of Labor Relations. This seemed to get resolved rather quickly, but was likely used to bolster support for Whitmire's termination. Whitmire was then replaced by Matt Vogel, who was an aspiring puppeteer who was hand-chosen by Jerry Nelson to take over his characters, which included Count Von Count, Snuffleupagus, and New Zealand, among others. Ah, ah, ah! Whitmire says he doesn't hold any ill feelings toward Matt over the transition, but he does sound confused. In Steve Whitmire's mind, he was doing the right thing and trying to protect something that Jim Henson created. But the Muppets don't belong to Jim Henson anymore. Now, Disney does their due diligence in honoring the Henson legacy by keeping his family on as consultants, but they don't have to. If Disney wanted to change Kermit the Frog's colors to hot pink tomorrow, they could do it and it would be their right to do so. They don't because they are truly seeking to honor the character while expanding upon an idea of what the character could actually be. Steve Whitmire was also trying to do what was best for the character. One side was looking forward and trying to connect the Muppets to a new audience, and the other was trying to preserve the historical integrity of the franchise. Without a compromise or at least a willingness to find one, you just can't get anything done. Times change, directors change, visions change. If our characters can't change with them, they will get left behind, or even worse, forgotten about entirely. Compromise and a willingness to experiment are absolutely crucial to a franchise's growth. And when a performer is unwilling to commit to doing both of those things and honor the vested interest of the most powerful entertainment company on the planet, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to get replaced. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Nerdstalgic. Stick around and check out one of the other episodes on the screen, and we'll see you in the next one.